Grace to you and peace. I began practically every sermon with this. Grace to you and peace. Today I do this directly using the words of the, the, the apostles, expansive words in Revelation, his greeting in Revelation chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from the one who is and who was and who is to come. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. The ruler of the kings of the earth. Oh, this is a good scripture reading for Christ the King Sunday. This is my text for today. I'll, I'll read it, in it uh, uh, through the whole of it. Revelation chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from the one who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood. And made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look. He is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty. To get the impact of the book of Revelation, you don't really interpret it. What you do is you absorb it, you experience it, you let it wash over you as you read it. And then here is the basic message coming through. It, the message is, it's all about God. It's all about the Alpha and the Omega. Alpha and Omega are the first and last words in the Greek Alpha. So that means it is the beginning and the end. God has, what, what is important is what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will. This is what matters. This is what we can trust. Let me highlight uh, the phrase in verse 4 that is repeated in verse 8. And it's repeated word for word. God is, God is called the one who is and who was and who is to come. This was vital for the original readers of the book of Revelation. It was vital that they be assured of this. They were living in crisis. They needed assurance, solid assurance. They needed hope. And this message was vital to them that God is their constant hope in an always changing world. Lloyd Douglas, author of the novel, uh, The Road, it, this goes back a while. Uh, that novel was made into a movie in 1950, so it goes back a while. Anyway, Lloyd Douglas, um, when he was at the university, he lived on the, on the, in an apartment in the second floor of a boarding house. And on the first floor of that boarding house, a um, retired music teacher lived in one of the apartments. The teacher was at that time frail and couldn't get out, out of his apartment. And so Lloyd Douglas and the, this teacher developed this routine where every morning Lloyd, Lloyd would go down the stairs, he opened the professor's door and call in and say, well, what's the good news? And the retired teacher would would pick up his tuning fork, tap it on the side of his, of his wheelchair, and he would say, this is middle C. It was middle C yesterday. It was middle C today. It will be middle C tomorrow. It will be middle C for a thousand years. God, the Alpha and the Omega is that. This passage is reassurance for people who have been or who are being battered by loss, despair, 
or the sting of evil. And I'm willing to bet that every person who is listening to this service, this sermon, has at some point experienced loss, despair, or the sting of the evil. Is there hope? And if so, where is there hope? We get the answer here in the book of Revelation's message. Revelation, in its own way, and oh my goodness, sometimes what a baffling way it is. It, it, with all of Revelation, with all of its fantasy-like images of beasts and winged creatures and its symbolic characters like, like the, the four horsemen of the apocalypse and these wild scenes of cosmic battles between good and evil. Still, in its own way, Revelation is showing us the end of our future story. The last, chef, the last chapter in our narrative. You know that there are, there are movies that um, begin at, at the end and then they flash back and so that, that everything, that, so that the movie is basically telling the story of all the, everything that's happening up until you get to the point where the movie started. Um, example of this is, is uh, Forrest Gump. Uh, you start out with the scene of uh, Forrest Gump sitting on the bench uh, at the bus stop. And um, so from there, he, he tells the story of how he got to, what, what brought him to the point where he is sitting at that bus stop. You know, two hours, a two hour overview of his life leading to his being at that bus stop. Now, when you are watching the movie, you know essentially where the movie is going, but you don't know all of the twists and turns, how or what's going to happen to get from the beginning of the story to that point where he's back on, on, at the bus stop. Now, I know, I know the movie and the movie of Forrest Gump goes beyond the bus stop a little further in there. But, but you get my point. My point is that um, you already know where you're going, but you don't know how it is going to be going to get there. That's the vision of Revelation. Let's try something. Uh, use your imagination. Construct for yourself a, a hopeful future story for you, for yourself. I'll give you I'll give you three questions to play with to do that. Uh, you know, first, if next if, if next year at this time you were to text me with news about one wonderful thing that has happened to you, uh, what would that news be? And then second, if it's if you were to send me an email five years from now, and the email was filled with good news about your life. What would that email say? And then if 20 years from now, you were to step into, you, into your personal Star Trek transporter in your living room and beam yourself over to my living room, and, what would, and you would tell me the most satisfying the, the satisfying and fulfilling things going on in your life, what would, what would you say? What would they be? Using, you know, crafting your future story like this, sort of imagining the future down the line, uh, can serve as the basis for a creative and inviting planning in, in future. But be sure that you take your future story far enough into the future. Revelation leads us to a future story that transcends this year, the next year, next five years, the next century. This scripture gives us a vision of something greater, something more, something beyond that has the power to give us hope. And that is a vision of God's magnificent future. 
Revelation shows us our future story is bound up in God's sacred story. Every person's story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Uh, the past is written in ink. The future is written in pencil. Maybe you've heard that saying before. Well, it is true. The future is written in pencil, except for the end except for the last chapter. Yes, there is, there is so much ahead of us that we don't know. Now, we quite properly make plans for things, but there's no guarantee that the, how those plans will work out. We don't know what twists and turns, for example, the, the pandemic is going to take. And then just in general, you know, we get good surprises and we get bad surprises. We get struggles that we expected. We get struggles that we didn't ex expect. We get joys that we um, saw coming at us. And we get joys that we didn't see coming at us. But here's the thing. In contrast to, on the one hand, utter pessimism and the feeling of helplessness and hopelessness. Oh, there's really nothing we can do about it. Que sera, sera. And in contrast, on the other hand, to a naive optimist, you know, just buck up, cheer up, you know, look on the sunny side of life. You can make it all better. No, in, in contrast to that, both of those, Revelation proclaims a message of concrete hope. And this biblical hope is not based on our human ability to sort out the problems of the world and to organize the world's future. It is based on what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will do in the future. Take this with you. God was there in your past. God claimed you. You are still wet from your baptism. God is here with you now, today. No matter what sort of chaos, brokenness, or evil you may be experiencing, God is with you now, repeatedly reclaiming you, loving you, freeing you from your sins by Christ's blood, forming you, body, mind, and spirit. And you know the end of the story now. God will be with you in the future in ultimate victory and in profound joy. Genuine hope resides in the ultimate victory of God. The end of your story, the last chapter in your book is God wins. God in Christ Jesus, God in Christ the King wins. This rich hope be yours. Amen. Amen.